Hello, I'm Matt, and welcome to Magic Workshop. Phil Makes Things from YouTubes was holding a competition, and by some miracle, I won it. One of the prizes was this great old Stanley knife that he's polished up, and it really looks nice. I do like the simplicity of the classic design. One screw to change a blade, no locking mechanisms, it just works. But because the blade's not retractable, you don't really want to stick it in your pocket. So I thought it needs a leather sheath. I want to wet form the leather around it, so I'm making this basic template to help with the clamping of it. I raided my scrap leather bin and found this piece of undyed vegetarian leather and I just soak it in a bit of warm water. I left it in there a couple of minutes, moving it around so it all gets covered in water and then it really gets quite soft and malleable. Whilst I was waiting for the leather to soften, I wrapped the Stanley knife up in a lot of cling film. This is because I want to form the leather around the knife itself, so I don't want to get the knife wet and I want to protect myself from the blade. I'd found another scrap bit of wood for the knife to actually sit on and then I can put the leather over it and start moulding it round the shape. This bit of wood I've cut is going to help push the leather down into that shape and hold it there until it dries. I could clamp it down, but this is just some MDF from the scrap bin and I've now got it wet so it's going to be useless to use again. So instead of faffing around with clamps, I'm just going to screw it down. This is much quicker and easier to do, and the screws actually provide really quite a lot of clamping force. I put the screws in quite close to the edge so they don't touch the leather at all. When I've got enough screws in, I can then take the whole thing inside and just leave it there for about three days till the leather's fully dried out. So after three days, I can bring it all back into the workshop and remove all those screws. The leather now is fully dried out, and the thing with wet forming is, it then holds the shape you've moulded it to, and is really quite hard. So this bit of leather is bigger than it needs to be as I want the knife to stick out the top a little so I can grab it. So I can just trim it off to the size I need. Obviously it's not going to be much use without a back to it. So I find another scrap of leather and cut a piece to a roughly the right size. I could have just cut a couple of slits in it and used that to thread a belt through, but I've got one of these fancy clips. It needs to be threaded through the back piece, so I mark out where some slits for it need to be cut and then I can get those cut with a sharp knife. This leather I'm using is about 3mm thick, so it's quite a fiddly job to actually get this to thread through, but you only need to do it once. It's on there pretty securely, but it comes with this little hole in the bottom for actually attaching it permanently, so I punch a hole and then I can use one of my copper rivets. The rivet goes through from what will be the inside of the pouch and then a copper washer goes on. The washer can then be set down, snipped off and domed and then that clip's going nowhere. So now the wet formed front and the back with the clip need attaching together. You can get specialist leather glues but I tend to just use my woodworking PVA. I'm not gluing them together as a permanent bond I only want to glue them together to hold them in place before I can get a more permanent fixing on. Sometimes that might be stitching it together. With this, I plan to use rivets. As with a knife blade, you don't want them cutting through the stitching. I mark out where I want the rivets to go. I'm doing about 3cm spacing for them, and then I can punch holes for them. I'm using these brass cap style rivets and I've got this fancy machine for setting them which really makes it easy but you can do them by hand with a hammer.
With all the rivets in, I can then trim off the excess leather from both sides and from the bottom. With things like this, I tend to oversize them because you can always trim off a bit later. Leather sands really well, so with this sanding disc in the drill, it does a nice job of just cleaning up the edges. And that's it all done. So the knife goes in and it's just a nice friction fit. I don't think there's much chance of this falling out, but it's still easy to get in and out. This was my first time putting it on the belt, so the clip took a little bit of fiddling to get it on, but I'm sure after I've done it a few times, it won't be too difficult. So, thanks Phil for a great knife, and thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more videos.